I definitely think there's room for one more rig. What do you think? I think so too. I don't think we don't have enough. enough. I mean, there's only three here, We're but I think I think one would be good over in the corner. Let's do it. Cassie, what'd you do? I pre-ordered a Ford Bronco a couple months back, and the dealer texted me and said it's going to be ready for pickup tomorrow. There's good news and bad news. It's ready. However, Cassie did the pre-order in North Carolina. We're in Oklahoma. <laughs> She has to work tomorrow. Luckily, I'm off. So I get to drive her Bronco from North Carolina, road trip it all the way out sweet. here to Oklahoma. I get to drive the Bronco for he the first time. I get to drive the Bronco for the first time. Like, how does that make 1100 you feel? 1100 miles, I'm kind of, I'm a little bitter. A little, little bit bitter. I don't blame you. But <laughs> we are headed to the airport, and tomorrow the Bronco journey begins. I'm jealous. Let's see how Let's it go. is. There's been a lot of hype on the Bronco. I'm excited. I'm a Jeep guy. We're going to find out. Does it live up to the hype? Let's go. Oh, no, Max, no, you ready? Tomorrow, there will be a new Ford Bronco in Oklahoma City. All right, guys, so we are here at Green Ford, and guess what? The Bronco is ready. So this is the Big Bend Sasquatch package, 35s, the 4.7 gears, the freaking 2.7 EcoBoost. I cannot wait. So I'm waiting for the salesman to come out. We're gonna take a look at it and then head inside, sign all the paperwork, and start this drive back home to Oklahoma City. So I'm excited to take it for a drive, see how it is. And luckily we have a 17 hour drive to really get a feel for this Bronco. <laughs> Looks sweet. Let's go inside and start getting all the paperwork done. The guys over at Green Ford really had their stuff together. I was in and out in less than an hour. Granted, we'd already started some of the paperwork, but it was a breeze. I was able to walk around the lot and check out the other Broncos they had. They did have two other Broncos on the lot. One did not have the Sasquatch package. And let me tell you, it just does not look the same as the Sasquatch package with 35s and all of the extra goodies. They did have a two-door Big Bend Sasquatch package, same color and everything, had the roof rack. It was really, really cool. We originally wanted the two door, but I think the four door is gonna fit the family a little bit better. So they wrapped up the paperwork and that was that. Yeah, buddy. We got you a green full tag. How much of this do you want me to go over? How much of it do you not want to go over? You tell me. I know more than you. All right. Ga features and gadgets and I'm sure you probably checked it out. Yeah, no. Nah. know as much as I did. I'm comfortable <laughs> with it. And that's a wrap. Driving off the lot in Cassie's new Ford Bronco. If I were her, I would be extremely jealous right now. So I'm gonna be a little careful because this has 3.6 miles. I'm still trying to figure out how in the world to work everything. My Apple CarPlay is not working. It's plugged into the USB there. It's still telling me to plug it in. I don't know, we're gonna hope it's the uh, the cable. But like I was saying, it has three miles, so I'm gonna go through and try to do a gentle break-in on it, varying the RPMs without going too high. And a lot of people don't think of this, but the axles with the Sasquatch package, we get the 4.7 gears in there, which there's a lot of teeth which build up extra heat. Now, most manufacturers off the lot don't recommend any break-in at all, and that's usually because, you know, they're 373s or 410s like the Jeep Rubicons, but 470s are pretty aggressive gears, and I think they are gonna get hot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive this, I'm about to get right on the highway, drive it for about 10 minutes, pull over to a gas station, let it cool down a little bit, and then continue on with my trip. I don't know if it's needed, but it's a brand new Ford Bronco, and uh, definitely want to break it in as, as good as I can. But overall, first impressions, it's very, very cozy. We will see. We have 15, like 16 something hours to go. So by the end of this, I think I'll have a good idea of like how I like the Bronco on road. I'm gonna get on the highway. We'll go from there. Gonna go ahead and pull in for a little rest break. Let this thing cool down. Every time you get a new, like a brand new car, there's always a uh, like a burning smell, mostly from the exhaust, the engine components, all of that stuff. And I'm starting to smell it. It could be the brakes as well, but I'm just gonna let the engine idle for a little bit, kind of slowly come down in temp, shut it off, go inside, get some snacks, get ready for the road trip, and uh, let these uh, let the diff cool down a little bit because she is uh, 
definitely probably getting pretty warm. We were running about 80 varying speeds. I will say so far. feet. Turn right onto nope. Highway 66. <laughs> I will say so far, this thing drives beautifully. The power is there. The 2.7 twin turbo V6 is quite impressive. I don't really have any complaints. Other than the uh, CarPlay starting off kind of weird. It could be the cord. We're going to run into sheets and find out. Grab a new cord. I need to mess around with this screen. I'm not a huge fan of this uh, like this digital screen. There's there's ways to change it in here, and we'll, we'll have to mess with that later. But right off the bat, the first drive, what? We've only put uh, 12 miles on it, and uh, I'm happy with it. I know Cassie is going to be ecstatic. It rides really good. There's plenty of room in here. It honestly feels like a truck in a way. Coming from a Jeep, there is a lot more leg room. Like I can spread my legs right here. Plenty of room. That is enough rambling. You say so many different things without stopping. I'm decompartmentalizing. Okay. But this will be studied for years. So let's continue on with this 16 hour freaking journey to Oklahoma City. We are 150 miles into the trip. The CarPlay issue was my cord, so that's no biggie. We are going 72 miles an hour up a mountain pass here. This thing is a blast to drive. I have a lot to talk about it. You know, I don't want to start comparing it to a Wrangler, but honestly, it should be compared to a Wrangler because that is exactly what Ford is marketing against, is the Jeep Wrangler. And Ford did a good job, um, but you know, driving it on the road is one thing. I only have 150 miles behind the wheel. Still at, what, let's see, a little under half a tank. So gas mileage isn't too bad. Granted, I have not been driving it hard at all, but the power is there. I'm still taking it very, very easy, uh, trying to break this engine in. But just cruising up this incline is no issue at all. We got a uh, Toyota Tacoma up here struggling. Let's do a little, just a little blip of throttle. And, and we're cruising, you know, we're at a 2.8, so 2,800 RPMs, cruising at 70 up the incline. There's plenty of power. The, the turbos, I got this screen up, so like, you know, give it a little bit of gas. We're, uh, you know, we're sitting around 11 PSI a boost, which definitely makes this engine happy. And I know a lot of people are probably wondering, why in the world would you order a Bronco from North Carolina if you live in Oklahoma? Well, we had just moved to Oklahoma, so, we uh, were looking around at all the Ford dealers, trying to figure out, hey, which one's gonna be able to get us one the, the quickest, honestly. So we called a few down in Texas, some in Oklahoma, some in North Carolina, and Green Ford in Greensboro, North Carolina, was the only one that could, they're the only ones that said, hey man, if you, actually, hey girl, whatever Cassie said, I'll let Cassie tell the story. But they were the only ones saying, yeah, I'll get it to you before Christmas. And he got it to us the last day of November. So big shout out to Green Ford, great dealership to order from, even though it's a thousand miles away. I will probably update you guys tonight once we put around 500 miles on it. There it is, 500 miles just after traffic. There was a big stretch of traffic, but we now have 500 miles on this. I'm starting to get a little tired, and every gas station stop I've been at, which has been uh, two, two or three so far, everybody wants to look at it. So it's still new, it's still hot, it's fun to drive. Dude, I thought that was a cop for a second. Getting a little bit loopy. Finally, some daylight. There has been a big change of plans. I've been driving for 17 hours straight for the very first time, 1160 miles on the new Ford Bronco. I, I've learned so much about this thing. There's a ton of things I love about it and I'm starting to find things that I don't really like about it just because I've spent 17 hours in it, 1100, 1200 miles, whatever. I'm getting a little bit loopy. Now, the plan was to drive home to Oklahoma City but Cassie and I had to run back to Texas this week sometime anyways. Uh, we had to pick some prescriptions up and I was like, dude, I've already been driving 17 hours. What's another three? So I'm waiting for Walgreens over there to open up. We're, uh, I'm in Denton, Denton, Texas, which added another three hours to the trip. Ugh, to the trip. I'm exhausted. Yeah, I woke up yesterday at six, started the drive at 2.30 in the afternoon and it's uh, almost eight o'clock here now. It goes to show that, I mean, clearly this is a good ride. 
and it's a very very good commuter car because i just spent 17 hours driving in it only stopping for gas and i cannot wait to do a full review video on it and actually start i mean i guess it's it's cassie's but there's after driving it beat in there behind the wheel for 17 hours straight there's so much that i've learned about the bronco and uh you know, I will say I wasn't expecting too much from it, and it definitely does still have a ton of shortcomings compared to a Wrangler. Uh, they are not the same by any means. Both have like the best of their class, and we'll talk about that later, but I am I am loopy. My hands are starting to shake. Luckily, I, I hit a second wind around four in the morning, but right now I'm in that zone where I'm just like, I'm zoned out. My body's kind of shaking a little bit. This is probably gonna put close to 14 or 1500 miles on a Ford Bronco in less than 24 hours. I don't know if that's a record or not. Let me know how many miles did you put on your Bronco the very first day that you owned it. Yeah, and it's looking kind of trashy in there. Don't tell Cassie. I'll see you guys at home. But, oh man, this uh, this washed out road isn't so bad in the Bronco. Oh yeah. Oh, that's actually really smooth. Wow, a lot smoother than the Jeep, that's for sure. Let's go show Cassie the Bronco. I know she's been waiting to see it. She's like, can you send me pictures, interior pictures? I'm like, um, I'm exhausted. I just need to get home. I think she's on a work call, so we'll sit out here and wait until she comes out and enjoy the beautiful mess of all the stuff that we have not unpacked yet. I locked the door. I was missing your reaction. Oh, let's see. Ooh, got that new car smell. Oh, yeah. Oh, there is a lot of headroom in here. There's compared. a ton of headroom. The back seat seems pretty similar. To a Jeep? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, it's crazy because it looks, the Bronco looks so much bigger. Oh, that's like when I first walked out. I was it like, is wider though. Like you have a lot more leg room. You have a lot more reg leg room sideways. Yeah, it is. It's oh. much bigger. Ooh. What the hell is your? Uh, I am exhausted. Road trip. I am exhausted, car. and we have uh, the electrician guy just called me to run power to the shop. How he's like, he's like, I'm gonna be here in 30 minutes. Oh, good. So, so you can't go to bed. No. So now I have to stay up. After a few days of rest, it's been like three days, well needed. Cassie's been driving her Bronco around. I have, and there's like 1,700 miles on it, I think. Already, it less, for less than a week, and there's already 1,700 miles on the Bronco. There is so much to go over, guys. I learned a lot from the like pretty, pretty big road trip, if I will say. There's a lot of things. I'll go over a few things real quick, uh, just my initial kind of review of the Ford Bronco. There's a lot to talk about. Yeah. We still haven't taken it off-road or anything, but just from driving it, of course the fuel economy sucks everybody's probably gonna ask what kind of mileage did i get they're advertised what 17 miles per gallon city and highway this one's 17 17 so it's not that great yeah it's supposed to be like 17. i got 13 on the drive here 13 or 14 miles per gallon okay. and that's running uh, probably 80 running? 80 miles an hour so <laughs> if you if we slowed it down to about 75 i'm sure we'd get about 15. since you've been driving around i just peaked to see what it was total average so far is 15. Okay. So that's with the trip and driving around town, 1,700 miles average of 15 miles per gallon. So that's not that great. That's not that great, but it's also not that bad. It is a very, very quiet vehicle. Even with the soft top, the wind noise isn't horrible. Better than the Jeep Wranglers with the soft top. I think However, I was thinking that when I was driving it home earlier. Yeah, it's not bad. There's one spot, like it's it, up it's front. In the back. Up front, it's quiet. Somewhere in the back, there is wind noise. So you can hear from the, the front. It's not loud, but if you had like passengers in the back on a long road, a long road trip, that might start getting a little bit yeah. annoying. And uh, one other really, really big thing, which we will talk about later, rocks in these oh, tires. These tires are the worst. No, can we talk about that now? Yeah. These tires are the worst for rocks. So we have a gravel road coming into our house, and these things pick up all of those little rocks. The gravel. It's. it's I mean, awesome. here's here's. Uh, we got a rock right there. A rock they're, they're all over right so Ooh. that is that happens a lot on all terrains but for some reason these good years it is the worst i have ever experienced when we hit the highway mm -hmm. you hear about 10 and they, they don't go all off at once 
It's like for five minutes driving down the highway, they are just slinging rocks. Some hit the fenders, some have already hit the body. I can't find it, like right there. Uh, nope, that's not a rock chip. I found a few, there's already a few rock chips on the body and I feel horrible for anybody behind us oh, because yeah, we are serious. throwing rocks all over the place. They're, these tires just love to grab them and they, they come out pretty easy. I mean, that's a lot of people are gonna think that's a silly complaint. But it is it is by far it's the worst no I've ever yeah it, it, it's the worst I've ever experienced. Yeah. But other than that, the body looks good. 35s make this thing look really really cool. The Sasquatch package it comes with front and rear lockers. The 35s we got like the you can turn them into beadlock wheels. It comes with the the better suspension. The Bilstein shocks with the remote reservoir right there. It comes from the factory sitting about an inch and a half, two inches higher than the other Ford Bronco. We got the 470 gears, front and rear locker. We get the uh, the trail turn assist, all of the goat modes, which we will talk goat about modes. because there's a lot, a lot when it comes to the goat modes and the different modes of four wheel drive. You know, it's not like a Jeep anymore where you put in four wheel low and go. That's like, you can choose four wheel low and slow in snow and you know <laughs> it, 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 there's a lot of different choices but yeah what are your plans for it my plans uh slowly build it you know i don't want to like go all out right like immediately i want to take it off road stock see what it can do and then uh see what kind of upgrades we want to do from there to go on like harder trails yeah like see what the see, see what the bronco actually needs because this is kind of like the rubicon model um we're missing rock rails we need rock rails i was thinking about that i don't even want to take this anywhere until so I until we get rock rails because yeah that's a very vulnerable body spot right there but we are pretty far into this video guys there's a lot more to come i'm gonna make a few videos on my channel and there will mainly be videos on my channel jeep gear and gadgets check it out if you have not already yep so that is it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it all my jeep guys don't worry the jeeps are not going anywhere but it is definitely gonna be important yeah the jeeps are not going anywhere no guys. and there's a, there's a new project one right there that, that's the next <laughs> that's the next video <laughs> But even if you are a huge Jeep fan, there's a lot to learn from this Bronco that Jeep could improve on in the future. And I'm gonna slowly show you guys that. I think the four wheel drive modes are gonna be a very, very cool one, just because there's a lot of hidden features in there that are gonna benefit people off road. So that is it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, give it a big thumbs up for this video, and I'll see you guys later. My name's Cassie. Oh, <laughs> no, no, go on your own channel. <laughs> see ya.